Welcome, everyone. What does the Flat Earth Truth Movement have to do with the New World Order and the ongoing Russian-Ukraine war? Well, to be honest, absolutely nothing. But if you listen to some Flat Earthers, everything. I know, I know. Please have extra strength face palm protection or a good pillow ready because you will definitely need it. First up is Russian Vids and his short video implying U.S.-Russian collusion, among other things. I have had to replace the music since I don't know if his was copyright free or not. Warning! Warning! Up in this required beyond this point. Now entering stupidity zone. Warning! Warning! that we not only fight for Ukraine, we fight for this new world order. Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. They're all connected! Not to be outdone, Level Earth Observer has a couple of videos out, not implying U.S.-Russian collusion, but out and out claiming what he thinks is evidence to back it up. Given the current situation with the mainstream media pushing big time the ever increasing souring relationship between Russia and America off the back of the current Ukraine situation, before things get too silly, I'm going to expose both those countries, both America and Russia, and show at the highest level they're all in bed together. I'm going to do that by showing historical footage from recent years where American astronauts supposedly traveled to the International Space Station on Russian Soyuz rockets. The problem is, when we look at some clips from those historical missions, we get to see blatant, obvious fakery at play here, and of course the results of which expose both America and Russia and show that they lie, deceive and manipulate their own people. I am cutting out bits of this video as Adam tends to repeat himself, but the absurdity of his evidence will be quite apparent soon. We've got two historical missions here, Expedition 39 and Expedition 53. Expedition 39 had a crew of a Japanese commander, three Russians and two Americans. They traveled to the ISS on the Soyuz rocket, supposedly, and departed on this Russian Soyuz rocket, okay? And the other mission is Expedition 53, where we've got a crew of, what is it, two, three Americans, two Russians, and an Italian. And these guys traveled to the ISS on the Soyuz and departed on the Soyuz Russian rocket. Okay, so these are the two missions we're going to look at, and these are the two missions that are going to expose both America and Russia and give the whole game away. Of course they will. Never mind that the space shuttle program was scrapped by President Obama in 2011, and these two missions were in 2014 and 2017 respectively, and all we had to rely on to get astronauts to the ISS was the Russians. No, that has nothing to do with it, right? Bear with me. Now in this first clip from Expedition 39, we've got two American astronauts and a Japanese astronaut who supposedly arrived at the space station on the Russian Soyuz rocket. The problem is, as we're about to see, the Japanese commander in the background is blatantly and obviously on a harness as he goes by. So let's have a look. We could always go look out the cupola windows, and if you're uh, if you're really good at geography, which is not easy up there, I'll tell you, looking down at the Earth on a cloudy day, it's kind of hard to tell where you are. But if you can make out some of the land masses, you could recognize them. And then the other way is we have a computer program that that. Uh... That was terrible, lads. Let me just bring him back. 
That's the commander of the ISS, a Japanese fella, blatantly attached to a harness in the background. What makes this even worse, he's got two American astronauts at the front here who supposedly travelled to this space station with him on a Russian rocket. So we've got Japan, Russia and America here, all with their fingers in the pantomime pot. Dear, oh dear, and it only gets worse. So, evidence number one with the Japan, US and Russian collusion claim. In this second clip from Expedition 39, involving the two American astronauts, we get to see another technique used here by these people. In this instance, augmented reality, where essentially the astronauts interact with items that aren't actually there. The problem is, sometimes they miss cue where the item is, and as a result, pick things up that aren't actually there, thinking that they're moving the hat or the microphone, but in turn, because they made a bit of a boo-boo and lost track of the augmented item, they kind of expose themselves, like this chap in the green top's going to do. He's going to think he's grabbing his mate's hat in a minute and putting it on the wall. The problem is, he didn't grab his mate's hat whatsoever, totally missed, lost track of where the hat was, and of course, as a result, exposed one of the techniques these people use. And in doing so, exposes Russia, exposes America, for being bet in bed at the highest levels. Because remember, these two American astronauts supposedly got to the space station on a Russian rocket. So let's see this guy in the green give the game away. See when you look out the cupola, I guess so far for me, uh, I like the the uh, the waters, the shallow waters in the Caribbean or the atolls in the South uh, East Pacific are just beautiful. That this blue. Yeah, that's the point. He's realised. Oops, I seriously guffed up. And evidence number two with the U.S. and Russian collusion claim this time. And now we come to Expedition Fifty Three, where I've got two more clips that expose both America and Russia, and of course space. The first clip involves Mark Vanden High. Mark is supposedly stranded on the International Space Station right now, as the Russians are threatening not to let him come home by using their rockets. But we've already exposed all of this anyway with what we've already seen. So we know it's just a space pantomime production. But we're going to make it even worse for America and Russia by looking at these more clips where American astronauts, in this instance, uh, Expedition 53, where American astronauts supposedly use Russian rockets to get to the space station, but we've got blatant harness pantomimes going on here, as Mark Vanden High does a flip for a score during a live, and makes it rather obvious, as we're about to see. So let's have a look. I mean, that is the most ridiculous, obvious fail, if ever I saw it. Evidence number three this time. It's the astronauts wearing harnesses claim, an oldie but a goodie. And it only gets worse. And like I said, this is American astronauts that supposedly got to the space station on Russian rockets, yet they're blatantly hanging off harnesses. Bear with me. And this final clip from Expedition 53, which involves three American astronauts that supposedly arrived at the space station on the Russian Soyuz rocket. But in this clip, the legend that is Randy, the 80s robot dance legend Bresnik, the man in the middle here, Randy kind of makes it rather obvious for all to see here, as he tries to impress one of the kids during his live here by randomly doing a somersault. The problem is, for Randy, he gets all caught up in his attachments of his harness, and as a result, has to bust out his old 80s robot dance moves to escape being all entangled in his harness. That's now, let's see Randy bust out his old-school 80s robot dance moves to escape his entanglement harness pantomime that he finds himself in here as he tried to nail this somersault in supposed space but of course in failing doing so and failing to do so and then having to bust out his weird 80s robot dance moves randy kind of gives the game away yet again and in doing so exposes america and russia yet again 
So take it away, Randy. Let's see some of them old school moves. Uh, it's a pretty interesting question. So right now we, uh, we look like we are standing up. And so we have lights above us. And so we think just like at home, you have your lights on the ceiling. So that is up. But then you can do this like Randy's doing. And for him right now, it looks like he, for him, that he's standing up. So there's really no... Now, at this point in time, he's spun in all different directions, which is not what he wanted to do. He wanted to do just a simple somersault. So he already knows he's in a bit of a mess, and so does his pal here, who's trying to help him out. But it's too late. And, of course, as a result now, we get to see Randy having to bust out some of the most authentic, bizarre... 80s robot dance moves I've ever seen a so-called astronaut have to do. Take it away, Randy. Sense of direction other than maybe the writing on the walls and the lights that we have, which makes it really neat when you're working, you can get in all different kinds of spots and it all seems to work fine. So it's a, it's a great place to... Yes, I agree. All the claims Adam makes here are ridiculous. And I've got to thank Randy for his robot dance moves highlighting the fact that these people use harnesses as part of their space pantomime production to get naive and weak-minded individuals to believe in absurdities, like space stations orbiting a scientifically impossible ball. Oh, the ISS size projection from Adam right here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to put up with silly robot dances, harness failures, augmented reality failures, hairspray fetishes, and all the other stuff that goes on. Like I said originally at the start of this video, I'm going to show you a historical footage involving Russia and America that shows they're in bed together at the highest level. So show this to people, highlight this fact, particularly given the narrative being pushed by the mainstream media off the back of the Ukraine situation, and of course the ever-increasing tensions being played out on our screen between Russia and America. You've only got to look at space missions involving American astronauts traveling on Russian rockets and see the failures on offer, exposing them at the highest level to be in bed together, liars, deceivers, to all their own people and manipulating the general populace and hiding the truth. Ah, it's always about hiding the truth, whatever that may be. I know I said I would never cover Daniel Pratt again last year, but I have found a video of his where he explains his reason of what is happening in Ukraine. Oh, by the way, this is one of the last videos he did with his water heater behind him. I will remember you. Goodbye, old friend. We will miss you. Daniel and his family have moved out of Washington State to the Midwest somewhere. He put out a video a few days ago from the new garage of his new place. And sadly, there is no water heater. Warning, Daniel Pratt is on his usual rant with this one and says some things that may or may not be true. All right, y'all, so check it out. This is why I left Ryan Christian's uh, Rumble link a few days back. It, it touches on a, on a lot of this Ukraine stuff. It was where I played the guy saying, uh, you know, what the people that have left this world due to the jab have in common. Well, the show is about a three hour show. It goes into a lot. So look up the last American vagabond on rumble. I'll go find the latest link. I think he put a show out yesterday about Ukraine. Let's not and say we did. We all probably know what that person thought anyway. Look people, there's, you know, someone just left a link that, oh, the U.S. has bioweapons labs in Ukraine and blah, blah, blah. They probably do. Just like Joe Biden, uh, Justin Castro are out here calling the truckers, neo-Nazis, fascists and racists. Again, anybody that was alive and awake and paying attention before Q ever came around knows the United States, Obama, and Biden installed the current Ukrainian government that is infested with open, proud, neo-Nazi, white supremacist fascists. They put them in there. 
So what does this have to do with Putin invading and being at war with the Ukraine right now? Well, they continue to call anybody fighting for freedom racist fascists. The entire thing is a cesspool of hypocrisy and lies, like we all know. You sound like you are talking about flat earthers and anti-maskers. So, you know it's all bullshit. Why is Putin not out there proving, showing? The Ukrainian government is literally a bunch of white power, racist fascists that was installed through the Maidan protests by the Obama puppet government with help from people like General Major General Paul Vallely that once again wrote the modern day book on psychological operations with Michael Aquino, both which are affiliated with Q. Putin is out there. He is busy invading Ukraine right now. Do some real digging. You can find pictures of Paul Vallely over there meeting with the Maidan protesters, the white power racist fascists. <laughs> the whole thing is such a joke. I mean, I know you all know, but most people don't even know the depth of the hypocrisy and just the insanity they're spewing. Well, they call those peaceful protesters in, in Canada, they just stamped out and stole their money. Fascists and, and white supremacists. As they now try to drag us into World War III to defend the quite literal, open, proud, white power, fascist, racists they put in power in Ukraine. <laughs> God help us all. Oh my. Daniel Pratt is into the U.S.-Ukraine collusion now. Who'd have thunk? I saved this LEO video for last because the last part of it angered me so much that I went off on a rant at the end while typing up the script. Now I have no idea what's going on in Ukraine with regards to Russia right now. I certainly don't trust a mainstream media, well-known liars, and manipulators of the human mind. You forgot Flat Earther in that sentence, Adam. You are welcome. But what I do know, though, is a method, a process, that can end all of this suffering and all of these wars. And we can all do it and all stand by it. The only obstacle is the ego. The ego is going to resist what I'm going to show you and cite to you, even though you can test it and verify it for yourself. The ego is going to resist because it doesn't want to admit that it's been fooled. No, that's not it. It's because it isn't reality. The ego, of course, wants to hold you back. When you have to do something difficult and empower yourself by doing difficult things, it wants to hold you back by calling in pizza and watching movies. Or in the case of Flat Earth, it's eating popcorn and watching Flat Earth videos on YouTube. The moment you overcome that ego is the moment you start to empower yourself and start to take control of your life and start to discern and start to think logically. Until then, you're just a puppet of your own ego and that is why we're in the mess we're in. So it's not humans being assholes to other humans? It's about ego? Huh, who knew? Simply overcoming that ego is not only empowering, setting you free, it also resolves lots of things enables you to accept the simple truths like demonstrable reality. Like the demonstrable reality of the Earth being an oblate spheroid that rotates once per day and orbits a sun and has a moon orbiting it. And in doing so, you expose the whole game of this place which we find ourselves in it. And as a result, can end all this suffering and all these wars by exposing all this corruption at the highest level all across the Earth. So rather than put a hanky with two colours in it and pretend to get all emotional watching the TV, actually do something. Empower yourself at the same time by overcoming your ego, by standing by real world demonstrable science. The results of which will prove we've been lied to at the very fundamental level and that they're at it all across the earth. So what is this thing you speak of, Adam? Inquiring minds want to know. Those simple demonstrations are large standing bodies of water 
do not have the ability to display convexity upon its surface. You can't have an air pressure system next to a vacuum without a solid wall. Prime example, NASA's vacuum chamber, the largest on Earth, six to eight feet thick concrete walls. These are scientific facts. You're going to resist them, but they're true. And here's another one. Tower cranes and pendulums are dead still on a non-windy day. Impossible on a spinning, wobbling, oscillating ball, one that's doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions. Particularly given the fact when every single practical reference involving a travelling pendulum shows it to deviate from the plumb and swing. That's only going in a linear fashion, yet alone trying to replicate the spinning, wobbling, oscillating ball doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions. These are simple, demonstrable facts. You're not going to like it because it proves you've been lied to. You're going to feel resistance within you. But you're not going to find any science that refutes that. Actually, it has been refuted and shown, but flat earth egos get in the way of demonstrable reality that can be and has been tested and repeated. You either don't understand or refuse to understand because reasons. So the moment you overcome that resistance and start empowering yourself by overcoming it and standing by what is, is the moment you start to make progress within yourself and you start to end this dark pantomime, wars and worldwide suffering. So the sooner you get control, the better. Like I said, rather than put your multicolored handkerchief in and, and shed a few tears getting emotional watching TV, actually end this by overcoming your ego as well. So you're only, you're ending this suffering. You're putting an end to the wars. You're mastering your own ego and empowering yourself by simply standing by real world demonstrable science. Guess what, Adam? What is going on in the world is not about science or demonstrable reality or the shape of the earth. It's about humans who want to control and harm other humans and take what is theirs for themselves. No one can refute that. The results of that prove we've been lied to and the globe scientifically impossible. The results of that prove they lie to us at the very top all across the earth. And the only thing to resist that, there's no science. The only thing that holds all of this together is your ego. And that enslaves you. The moment you uh, overcome that, you're empowered by it and it becomes an empowering tool. So why are you choosing the life of disempowerment and delusion by putting ankies in your pocket and yet letting your ego rule you? Scooby-Doo's less confused, guys. Overcome the ego. Stand by what is. All of this ends. It's up to you now. Adam, what the fuck is wrong with you? To think what is happening is about the lie of the globe that we are supposedly told from birth is so much fucking bullshit. You know it but you are using your bullshit to further the flat earth cause because your own ego won't allow you to think otherwise. You are trapped in your own delusions and you are deceiving those around you with those same delusions. I would say you need to drop the ego, drop the delusions and get back to reality. People in the Ukraine are displaced and those that are left are fighting and dying all because of one man's ego and obsession with controlling their country. No amount of denying reality and believing in a non-existent flat earth will stop any corruption or suffering in this world. To you I say, get your head out of the ass of the flat earth movement because some of that shit it produces is toxic to everyone. The earth is flat, it is flat, so very flat, the earth is flat. Flat earthism is almost cult-like at its very core. Like any religion, those in it think that their way is the only way, and that salvation for the world can't be attained until we all follow its doctrines. It is not based on reality and will never be reality. 
Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the like button, comment and share and hit that notification bell to get notified of any new content. See you in the next episode.